everyone, I'm Kim Cash and I'm coming to you from Portland, Oregon. It's a rainy Tuesday and I just thought I would spend my morning painting a pumpkin. I did this, it's supposed to be like Jack Skellington, uh, kind of little fan art, look like him, but I'm not an artist and so I thought I'd try to do Sally. I think that's her name, I should have looked that up, but I thought I'd do Sally and try to do her. So I've got her face is skinnier, and so I thought I'd try to do, you know, have them together like this out on my front porch. So we'll see how it comes out. First, what I like to do is just try to sketch something just so I have an outline. I have just put in some eyes, and I'm sure you can't probably see it, but it's just a tiny little sketch. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, so you guys can watch with me if you want. And I was also going to just tell a spooky story while I do it. My daughter and I and my daughter-in-law and a friend and my son went up to Seattle. My son isn't interested in ghost stories or spooky stories, but he went with us because he had something to do up there. And we went on a ghost tour. And then the next day what we decided to do was just go and find some, some interesting sites to see on our own. So one of the things I told the girls was that when I was growing up back in the 70s, I was aware of the Ted Bundy story. He was a serial killer. I'm sure you guys have all heard of Ted Bundy. But back in those days, in the early 70s, I was growing up and my parents were very concerned about me just walking from my school home, which is only a few blocks away. I, I bought my parents' house, so I'm in the same house I grew up in. Anyway, I only had to walk a few blocks, but they were very concerned, and they'd say, don't talk to any strangers. You know, there's that stranger danger, uh, which my daughter-in-law has a podcast called Stranger Danger. You guys, if you're interested in true crime, you might want to listen to her stories. But I was growing up in Portland, at the time that Ted Bundy was committing his crimes. And so I believe he committed his first murder in 1974. There are stories about his, uh, how do I say this, his, his father and mother, his, his uh, DNA. And from stories that I've heard, it was believed that he was a product of, um, a inappropriate family relationship and so sometimes I wonder if that was his trigger because he didn't find out about that till he was in college and the reason was that his parents were played the role of his grandparents and so I think that kind of makes it clear what the situation is but anyway he found out when he was in college about this situation of his birth um, genetics. And so I'm wondering, you know, that sounds like a really big trigger to me. And so I just think that it's very interesting that he found out in college and he started his murders in college. He'd had a girlfriend and she broke up with him and his victims all resembled her. They had the same body type, they were tall, thin, same kind of hair color, I believe. But anyway, I was gonna start my pumpkin and I'll just tell you a few stories about it as I, um, as I paint. But we did go to, me and my daughter and my daughter-in-law, we drove to the university, which Ted Bundy did go to the university in Seattle and he tried to abduct women. One of the stories is that he tried to get women from a park and went up to five different women. Four of them told him no when he had a, a, a sling on his arm and was pretending like he had a broken arm and so he asked the women if they would come help him get a sailboat out of his the little Volkswagen Beetle, his bug, which I, I don't know how a sailboat would fit into a Volkswagen bug because I have a Volkswagen bug and I know I couldn't fit any kind of a sailboat into my boat, my car. Even with the top down, mine's a convertible, I don't know how he would possibly fit a sailboat into his car. 
but he went up to these women and asked them. Four of them told him no, they must have just gotten a creepy feeling and not wanted to help him. But a fifth went, one went with him to his car. And as soon as she saw his car, she obviously knew there was no sailboat, there was no need to be helping him, and that it was a setup, and she took off running, and she escaped. But he did go to another woman and asked her to come help him, and she went with him, and she became a victim. So there were witnesses, because it was at a park, so people said that this attractive man was coming up to different women, asking them for help, and that he had his arm in a sling, and they said he had, I think they said he had a tennis uh, outfit on. When So he seemed like a polished, attractive, articulate man that was asking for help because he had an injured arm. But even if it was all true, I don't know that a guy would go sailing with a broken arm or an injured arm by himself. I don't know how you would um, run the sailboat lines and stuff. I'm not a sailor, but I just think, you know, that sounds odd just in itself to me. And I am glad to know that these five other women were aware enough or they had a sense of something strange enough to do with not going with him or getting away from him. But unfortunately, he um, got one of his victims at a um, sorority. She went to. She was in a sorority, and she had gone to visit her boyfriend. Three, I think it was three or six doors down, because in the um, sorority and fraternities, there's like fraternity row, and there's the buildings that are the fraternities and the sororities. So one of his victims had just been visiting her boyfriend in one of the fraternities, and she only had to walk down a few doors. So my daughter and I and my daughter-in-law went to uh, get a, just a kind of an impression of where this abduction took place. So we drove over to the university and went down Fraternity Row. We drove um, up to the fraternity where the boyfriend lived, and we walked and took some, I, I think just pictures, but maybe I have a video I'll look to of the fraternity and the alleyway where she was abducted. So I will post that and you guys, if you're interested, then um, just keep watching while I work on my pumpkin. I have to put on my glasses because not being an artist and uh, not being great at this stuff, I just kind of need some kind of help <laughs> so my glasses will help. So I'm going to mix some of my own colors and I'll tell you what you need. You need like a little palette and of course paint brushes. I guess you could use markers if you wanted. But Sally has kind of a reddish, a ginger color hair. So I could actually maybe just leave the color of the pumpkin. But I was thinking I would mix some orange and this is called pumpkin. <laughs> the color's pumpkin. And this is just America's Acrylic Favorite Paint by Delta. Let's see if I can get it open. And I always keep some extra brushes and some water. And I always use a bamboo skewer because it seems like I, I can always use one. So I've got those sitting right here. And I also have just a recycled glass jar that I use with some water. So I'm going to try to mix some orange, just a little orange. And it's really a vibrant orange, so I'm going to add a little brown because her hair is more of a, um, people might call it red, but in my mind it's kind of a brownish orange. So I just add some brown on there, mix it up. I might have gotten too much brown. But I'm just mixing it up with my little skewer. And actually, I think it's coming out pretty good. It's kind of an orange. And I could add a little bit of white to brighten it. But I think that's pretty good. And so, I think I'll use this little brush. I have some super expensive 
inexpensive brushes because, you know, if I was an artist, I would have spent some real money on these things, but I'm not. And I just do it as a hobby, so. Um, and with a pumpkin, you know, you don't have to worry about it not turning out. You're not spending a lot of money. This pumpkin, I got it at um, the Portland Nursery, and they were 39 cents a pound, so I think it came to about 30 cents, which is a good price. Anyway, uh, the story about Ted Bundy, I'll um, come back and talk about that at the end some more, but I just wanted you guys, if you're interested, just keep watching. so far um, I'm not totally happy with the orange around it so I think I'm going to add um, maybe some purple but first I think I'll do a little yellow and try to make a um, maybe like a shirt shirt probably should be a patchwork because um, she wears a patchwork dress. I was thinking I could um, just sew a little fabric, you know, make a patchwork and just lay it underneath her <laughs> so that people might know better who she is. I think it's because I'm a writer that I like to create characters. I like to, for, for Halloween, I like to make a whole scene, you know. It's kind of like, I just like to create. And I think because I like to write, I like to create scenes with other things, such as my Halloween decorations. Um, I don't know if you guys make scenes for your Halloween, but I try to. I try to. Um, last year I had a fairy garden scene with a dragon and some fairies and mushrooms or toadstools and fairy houses and the year before I had a um, kind of a Jack Skellington thing again and I'm thinking um, maybe I'll put I think I might add some purple but I'm thinking I'm going to make her shirt a little patchworky. Let's see if I add. I don't want to mix colors that I've already pretty much used. So I'm just, this is called um, Tanzanite. And it's got a little shimmer to it. See, I could use this brush again. Because I was thinking of mixing in some blue with it. So it's not so shimmery. I'm making it a little more matte.
Yeah, I think I like that better. Could use a different brush in there. You know, when you do, um, <laughs> I'm not an artist, I've said that, but I like to create things. And um, when you're doing stuff like this, you don't have to worry about the cost. You don't have to worry about it, you know, lasting forever because the pumpkin, though when you don't cut into the pumpkin and you're just making, if you're making a um, picture, it's going to last longer than if you made a jack-o'-lantern. Um, a lot of times I like to carve my pumpkins way early and then of course they're all rotten by uh, Halloween. So this way they'll last a lot longer. And sometimes I do some that are, you know, non-Halloween theme, like, you know, do lace or something. And then I can use them all the way through Thanksgiving. And being that I'm cheap, <laughs> uh, it's a good way to decorate, to reuse your Halloween, what you, what you can, you know. Thanksgiving isn't spooky, so you're not gonna reuse everything. But if I can reuse pumpkins, I will. So I don't know if you guys make and create your decorations, but if you do, put something in the comments so I can go check out yours. You can have a whole creative community. So I was going to um, talk a little bit more about it's hard for me to talk when I'm trying to concentrate and think of what Sally looks like. But I was going to talk a little bit more about Ted Bundy. I know it's creepy, but that's kind of Halloween. The Halloween theme is creepy. Um, Ted Bundy, I know that he... I, I knew that he had gone to a university in Seattle. And I knew he'd, he studied law. But I didn't know he was a Chinese major. So I thought that was really interesting. And then um, I also didn't know that, um, I knew that he had helped an investigator with another serial killer, trying to give some information and stuff, but I didn't know which one it was, and it was um, Gary Ridgway, which was the Green River Killer. And um, listening to some of Ted Bundy's stuff, he was very manipulative. Of course, I mean, most serial killers probably are. I mean, how else did they get their victims, right? But um, he manipulated the investigators, too, you know, by, um, oops. See, when I talk, then I make mistakes. <laughs> um, he kind of bribed them to let him have special privileges or something to give them information and help them track down the Green River Killer. And the Green River Killer was at the same time, you know, I grew up in a time with a lot of serial killers running around. So my parents were always very worried. Um, but Ted Bundy helped give some profiling. I don't know if profiling was a thing back in the early 70s, like they do nowadays, but he helped the investigators deal with searching for Ridgeway, telling them, you know, what he would do and how he'd go back to the body or whatever he said. And so he helped the investigators on the Green River murders with Gary Ridgeway. And the Green River, um, I was up in Seattle around the time of the Green River murders too, and I was living, I was married and had. I'm not sure if I'd had my kids yet. I'd had at least one. and No, I had two. And I have three kids all together. But at the time, the Green River Killer was going around, and I always associated it with Green Lake. And I've done another little spooky story about Green Lake. But <laughs> to be in Seattle at the time when there's all these serial killers running around in Seattle, it's kind of crazy. But anyway, 
what do you guys think of um, me adding the purple? Do you think that adds? I, you know, I was thinking that you couldn't tell her hair was her hair so much from the pumpkin. So I think this kind of helped. I don't know. So let me rinse off my brush. So this is what I have so far. And like I said, I'm not a, an artist, but I do have fun <laughs> creating things. Creating characters. And this isn't a character I created, but um, you know, it's fan art. And I think it's appropriate for Halloween, even though these are from Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I still think it's suitable for Halloween. And you don't have to be an artist to paint something for Halloween. I mean, you know, it's, it's just for fun. And they're not gonna last long, so I don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to add some more white and do some more shading, I think. So for me, um, serial killers are not, it's not one of the stories I read about, but being that I grew up, and was living in Seattle at the time of Ted Bundy and the Green River Killer. Um, I find it interesting that I have a degree in psychology, so I do find it interesting and wonder why they did what they did. So I, I do think it's fascinating and it, um, Halloween, I think it's, you know, a story that's interesting to share and it's about the psychology of people and what triggers them, what makes them do the things they do, especially such horrific things. Um, you know, how did they, how did they live with themselves after they do what they do? But I, obviously these people are serious narcissists and um, sociopaths because you couldn't you couldn't do the things you did these people did with you know with no empathy no compassion so I do think it's fascinating and trying to figure out what triggered them what made them start because they didn't always do what they did. So I think that's my pumpkin. That's my Sully. I guess I could do, I could decorate the back a little, but it's not dry yet. So let me see what would happen if I, I just make some swirls. You know, it's just something to, some kind of ornamentation so it's not just all purple. So, back to Ted Bundy. <laughs> he did um, 
they determined that he killed at least 30 women. So it's a, it's a sad story. And if we could figure out what makes people do the things they do so that we could get them the help they need before they commit their crimes and ruin their lives as well as everyone else's, I think it would be you know, a valuable thing to do if we could figure it out. But Ted Bundy was, <clears throat> he was executed. And um, he tried to wheel and deal with the uh, police, prosecutors, investigators to live as long as he could by promising to tell where people were, where they were buried, but he just kept manipulating. And I think they finally gave up on him. And so all the way around, it's a really sad story. <laughs> okay, I think that's good enough. There's my um, Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. And then here's my little... Jack Skellington, which was just one color, so super simple. But I hope you guys enjoyed this story and um, my little pumpkin creation. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more spooky stories or um, just watch some crafts or baking, then please subscribe to my channel. You can click on the little notification bell and you'll be notified of the next time I upload another video, which I'm planning to try to do a bunch during October because I want to have a spooktacular <laughs> um, October. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you guys have a great you know, lead up to Halloween and I just wanna thank you for spending a little time with me. So bye. So this is the alleyway behind the fraternity where one of uh, Ted Bundy's victims was abducted, supposedly. It was Georgianne Hawkins and she was returning from the fraternity of her boyfriend, walking six doors down this way towards her sorority when she disappeared. And people said that they had seen that now infamous tan Volkswagen Beetle back here. And it is believed that Ted Bundy abducted her back here in this kind of secluded little area and then um, committed his crime and she was later found um, not alive but it, some um, hunters from Issaquah were the ones who discovered her body and um, it's just a sad thing that this happened in this beautiful setting not the alleyway but the, that's where she was abducted but this beautiful university row I'm just moving out to the front so that you could see how pretty it is out at the front of the fraternity. This is where Georgianne Hawkins' boyfriend lived while they went to school here. This was the fraternity he was in. And just down the street is where Georgianne lived in her sorority. And as I said, she was abducted from the alleyway behind the fraternity.